Netflix. No. Netflix, why? Movie was Rob Sest. And it was basically about Robert Pattinson and his stardom. It's a, oh, spoilers by the way, but it's a documentary, so I don't really know how spoiler you can get. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a documentary on Robert Pattinson and why everyone's so obsessed with him. And his or hair. Something. Yeah, and his hair, oh my god. This movie is very strange. First off, it's an hour and nine minutes long, which doesn't seem like that long of a time. It's, However... The information they give is very repetitive, over and over and over again, the same things being told by seven different people, exactly what you need to know, and you could have been told... Would well, they take ten minutes to tell you? They could have told you in about a minute and a half. So it's just dragging it out and showing lots of pictures of Robert Pattinson. It's just you could have done it so much faster. It starts off with a photo montage of Robert Pattinson, which is, in my opinion, very poorly done. But I mean, it's not that great. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole, pretty much the whole thing consists of just interviews with a bunch of people while you have pictures of Rob in different places. It's literally the entire thing. Which, and it's honestly, it has a lot of good information in it about how he kind of how he grew up and like what people used to do with him and where he got different roles and stuff. But everyone you're talking to is just someone that like had one encounter with the guy or took a picture of him in Vancouver or oh my god I met him at a pub that one time. No one really knows him that they interview and Robert Pattinson isn't in this at all except to talk for about anything like his pictures which or like two added. quick three second videos I swear to god that was yeah. like it. <laughs> so obviously one of the biggest things the movie talks about is his stardom from the Twilight franchise. Uh, I think I timed it and it was about halfway into the 70 minute movie that they just started talking about Twilight and that pretty much went to the end. So, which is very upsetting. They only talked briefly about his stint in Harry Potter. Like they said, nobody really cared in Haley yep. and Twilight about him being in Harry Potter, so I don't know. It's, it's definitely a thing. I just, they didn't have like any family members or anybody that kind of like actually had a real relationship with him, so it obviously wasn't Con like, it's not something I think they got approval from him from, it's just something that was right. being done and like you couldn't do anything about it as him because he is, as they kept saying, a commodity, like a product. So he just kind of had to deal Buy with it. Buy your share in Robert Pattinson today. <laughs> it's going on the stock market tomorrow. Stock may be going down <laughs> as the Twilight movies are over. Oh yeah, this movie is also like five years old now. I had never heard of it until Me really either. recently. I think it was put on Netflix kind of recently. Which makes it kind of weirder because it's no longer <laughs> culturally relevant. Yeah, they're talking a lot in the movie about who is he dating? We think he might be dating Kristen Stewart. Maybe we're hoping, but we we're not it sure. Be a thing. We saw them as, with a picture together. We're not really sure. Their yet. legs were intertwined. <laughs> We'd attempt it for you, but. And it was extremely attractive. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. So. Yeah, there's nothing to really emotionally invest you in this movie unless you are a super fan or a twi hard. As they kept saying, which is a thing. Yes. Um, I think, yeah, because a lot of documentaries, they can be really interesting because you don't know exactly where it's going. But this one, from the very beginning, everybody knows where it's going. Oh god, who's Robert Pattinson? We all know who Robert Pattinson is. You're not mm -hmm. telling me anything new. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Once it starts talking about Twilight, like you said, it doesn't stop. And the documentary does point out that they think people are a little more obsessed with the character of Edward Cullen than they are with Robert Pattinson himself. Which was actually a really good point, and I'm glad yes. they made it. So, it was just <laughs> basically about that role, for the most part. And they interviewed a lot of super fans which include moms and daughters alike. Yes, and there was a mother-daughter pair. That was great, and the mom talked the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> the daughter didn't talk at all, so I don't really know why she was relevant. There was one girl that popped up a lot, but they, they came in, and most of them that you saw briefly were just kind of screaming into the camera and couldn't mm -hmm. say words or sentences properly. Properly, they're like, oh my god, Robert Pattinson, I have the house! <laughs> that was pretty much it. <laughs> which, did I need that? <laughs> it was very interesting because I'm pretty sure it was a British-made film, since all the super fans they yeah. interviewed were British? Yeah, and all, oh. most of the people they interviewed yes. actually were British. And, but the point they kept making was that his popularity is really in the United States. It's, he's not as popular yeah. in the UK. So that was, it was interesting so, that it was kind of local stuff, but. 
what can you do? <laughs> I, I think part of the reason I didn't like it was because I honestly thought I was going to watch a film that kind of actually critically analyzed part of the whole teenage obsession with someone like this. But really they just kind of talked shallowly about, oh, he has really nice hair and what he, how, what is, what they actually talked about his hair for about 10 minutes, I think. It, yeah, and they talked about exactly how he does his hair every day, but what he says he does comparatively and just like what he wears and how he has tailored stuff and people he's dating. One of the things I really noticed when they were talking about his hair was that they were like, his publicist or someone tells him not to go out in hats because with people like him less without his hair. And I'm just like, what? That's so ridiculous. You're trying to tell this guy he can't wear hats because people will like him less. Don't you want him to not tan because he needs to be pale <laughs> yeah. for being a vampire? I don't exactly. understand. They also want him to shower in glitter before walking outside. <laughs> they didn't talk about that in the documentary, but we all know it's true. Definitely. But definitely, like, they could have analyzed why teenage girls at that age, or even mothers, really were really so... They talked about the vampire aspect a lot, yes. and they brought in the vampire... What was the guy? He was... Oh. He, some guy he that was, really, like, a specialist yeah, in the vampire, vampire genre, uh, and... It was kind of interesting, I guess. Mm -hmm. But they just talked about why vampires are so much better than, like, mummies, or Frankenstein's monster, or anything like that. Vampires live forever, so then, therefore, they must have some kind of style. Or yes. something. That was so ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it was interesting, but it's also like a, yeah, that's not, I mean, that's part of the reason they were obsessed, but this isn't the first time that's happened in the history of like people being obsessed with things, so I thought you could have definitely gotten a little bit deeper into why people look for that right. kind of obsession. I think it also would have been cool, especially to look at why the mothers were so into Twilight. They showed this one picture of the Twilight moms, and they're holding up a giant poster yeah. that says that, that's clearly like handmade and in the same font as the Twilight books. stuff, yeah. So I think it would be cool to see that phenomenon, that side of it. And I mean, you could always take the Fifty Shades of Grey aspect with that as well. That probably wasn't here yet when but, they made the film, but still, it's, it's something that's been around before that too. Just that kind of genre and that kind of like fascination that you could have yeah. really explored. Instead of spending 20 minutes on his hair, which you keep adding the time in, but it felt like forever. <laughs> you could probably pull off the hair, you've got weight, you could do his style. They taught you how the to in the camera. They did talk about smoldering a lot. They did. Another thing they did talk about was Robert Pattinson's music ability and which, how he yeah. wanted to get a music career and how he actually helped write or sing or both compose music a little bit and play yeah. for it for the well, Twilight movies yeah. and stuff which I thought was really actually interesting and I didn't know that right I've never seen Twilight I've read the first book I've that's about seen my knowledge the first movie and it was very subpar I heard it got better after that but I just don't yeah. care enough um, I'm not I don't judge people that like it it's whatever I'm just kind of like not my thing Robert Pattinson seems cool though and I love Kristen Stewart so I'm not yes. it's, it's whatever but the music career was pretty interesting because it's just not something I knew about him. And apparently he was actually playing piano as the character and a lot of people doubted that. And just he has all these musical abilities and he could have done a lot of different things to become a star. But he just kind of got roped into Twilight without really yeah. wanting to be in it, which is kind of interesting. It was also interesting how they talked about how he did lots of community theater. Um, and even after Twilight, I think they said, he tried to take this small role in a movie called summer something summer i don't remember that might have been after harry potter they kept going back and forth so the timeline was a little bit weird but he was taking these smaller roles instead of going for bigger roles and then they also talked a lot about when he auditioned for twilight how it was auditioning for this character and how it felt because edward's described as like this perfect person he's so handsome and beautiful and a greek god basically. yes which, I mean, I've read the books, and I know he's described as, like, really gorgeous, but I feel like, I mean, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. So I guess I feel like they didn't harp on it as much. But we might, I might have skimmed over the three pages. Right. However, I thought his approach to that was really interesting, because the way he said he approached it was... Or other people said he said yeah. he approached it. Yeah. <laughs> was that that's the way Bella sees him because she's in love with him yeah. and obviously you don't really see the flaws in the person you're in love with. So I thought that was really interesting and it's a really cool acting perspective from him which we don't see a lot of, we nowadays just see him hating on the entire Twilight yeah. franchise. Thank God it's over. 
I think everybody that. wanted that to end at this point. <laughs> I don't know if there's much else we could say about it. It's 70 minutes, it's pretty repetitive, it's information you probably could have gotten most of on Wikipedia. It's basically <laughs> like Wikipedia on film, actually, but pinker. It's very pink. So much pink! Why all the pink? Ugh. Netflix, no! The O scale, by the way, if you haven't heard of it, one to five O's, five being the worst, one being Netflix actually didn't do so bad this time. Gabby, what would you give uh, Rob Sest? I give Rob Sest probably two O's. Not too bad. A little too long and a little too repetitive, and the transitional scenes were subpar at best. But you know, you could do a lot worse for a bad Netflix movie. I was thinking the same thing. The audio was pretty great. The lighting and the shots were all decent enough when they had them for interviews, which isn't easy necessarily. And documentaries kind of take a good amount of work to put into it. That wasn't terrible. I watched the whole thing. I didn't feel like tearing my hair out. So I'd say two O's as well. So, one last time, I guess. Netflix, no! Well, thank you guys for tuning in this week. We'll see you next week. Tell us what movies you want us to review. The first movie we reviewed for Netflix No is Movie 43.